Hello and welcome to another coffee with me today. The one having coffee is Rob Palmer, and we are surrounded by the sounds of Barcelona. I stopped now. <laughs> I stopped now. There's always something being built in Barcelona. Rob, first of all, you are a, a presenter, commentator, producer. So, is this okay with you? The set? Absolutely, yeah. You've got the light coming from the right direction. Yeah, you've got the top top camera person over there. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. got your best side. Okay. I don't have a good side. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, this, yeah, this and the coffee's right. beautiful as well. It's coffee's not just a prop, it's proper coffee. Actually, when he says coffee with Guillaume, it's proper, oh, no, proper no, no, coffee. No. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. The voice is familiar. The face <laughs> is familiar. Because, of course, you've been in Sky for how long? I joined Sky in 1995. And so, 96, we started Spanish football. So, yeah, been associated with Sky since then uh, and now technically freelance so now doing mainly La Liga for ESPN for the United States and Canada to spreading the gospel over there. You were doing in 96 La Liga from Manchester. Uh, we, we actually well, if you want to go back we actually started doing La Liga in 1992 in Manchester for Granada Television Wow. And then we took it to Harper's Wine Bar which was in the middle of Manchester which I think was back in the day partly owned by George Best and then he brought over a bunch of uh, Spanish guys and businessmen and they started a big tapas bar. So we used to go do what became Revista on Sky. We did a similar show on Granada television. So that was from like 92 to 95 and then we, we came together on Sky. So I'm the Rob Palmer of La Liga because he started it. <laughs> and then I watched your, what you on 96, you and Jerry Armstrong might have been, must have been uh, commentating the games at the time? Yeah, yeah, we, we started with a blank sheet of paper when Sky got the rights in yeah, 96, 97 I think it would be, yeah. Do you yeah. remember the story of how uh, Jerry got the job where he was at the point of getting the call from Sky? No, no. Yeah, you must have heard it a hundred times, especially you who were with Jerry all the time. <laughs> he was actually literally on a roof putting the aerials for a house, uh, the sky, the sky. He was selling Sky, wasn't he? Was he was selling, selling a version sky. of Sky. It's like Ready Fusion back in the day. It was a way of getting Sky Television and cable television. And he, he was working as a salesman for them. But knowing Jerry, he's probably putting the aerials up as well. And this is the way you explain it. It's the way I, I remember it. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw you you would you were doing that, and I was working for Don Balon Magazine at the time, Football Magazine in Spain. So I rang Dave Lawrence. This is how I remember the story, but. Mm -hmm. Talking to Dave recently, he said, it's not how it happened, it doesn't matter, it's how I'm going to tell it. I rang Dave and said, look, you're doing Spanish football, mm -hmm. um, I would like to do a, a, an article on you for Don Ballon, and he invited me over to the studios. You must have been working that day because there was only one game and yep. you commentated on yep. it. Yep. Jerry must have commentated on it. David Bowen was the presenter. Yeah. Dave showed me the gallery and said, this is the studio, this is the cameras, cameraman, Presenter, you sit next to David Bobbin and the show is about to start. And you're the guest of the, of the show. He says, I will never ever, he says to me, never ever would have brought somebody in without any preparation or anything. Yeah. Obviously, he's a producer, very anal. Yeah. And then invited him over to do that. But that's, that's how I remember it. And at halftime, this, this happened. Dave says, We're going to start a highlight show on Spanish football. Do you want to do it? Yeah. And that was the beginning of our long story together of traveling do you remember games. how you were dressed with the big thick glasses and the turtleneck and yeah leather jacket you look like the kind of guy that you should avoid when you go through passport control yeah. you were that guy yeah <laughs> one day i got one of them things similar to what you're wearing now and uh, the producer at the time must have been not dave lawrence maybe it was dave he actually came with a, with scissors he says can i, can I cut this it's like no you cannot yeah, cut this all, all the kids are wearing them now again yeah well and and, and you know my battle to uh to wear the clothes I wanted to yeah, wear yeah. Were, was not worn, but at least now at CBS they allow me to wear whatever I want everywhere, really, my Liga TV and everything. You mean you chose to wear that today? I do choose. <laughs> well, today, actually, I'm, I'm dressed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dressed down. But um, but yeah, it was marvelous time together. It felt a little bit like a like an isolated island that we could do our own thing. Yeah, it, it was an evolution because you think back and there had been Serie A football with James Richardson and the way that they had produced that for, for Chrysalis television. That actually for you came in. Sky didn't produce it. They brought in Chrysalis who'd done Serie A and they did it for a season. I think it was Mark Durden-Smith was the presenter. I was the commentator. We had no co-commentator, no, co no expert. Uh, I saw Jerry on Football Focus talking about, he was in, involved in the FA Cup. He was working for Adidas as well. He had many jobs, Jerry. 
Uh, I remember he played for Mallorca, so we brought him in. They were desperate to get a, you know, a, a, a Spanish journalist in, which was revolutionary back in the day to have a journalist in. We tried one or two, you came in, outstanding from day one working for Don Ballon, and that's how it was born. And then it was like layer after layer after layer. And then I think a whole generation, my son's now 29, and his generation or a generation that were brought up watching football Saturday night, La Liga Sunday night, and then picking up on Revista, which was a, a magazine show which was ahead of its time during the week or whenever it was repeated on Sky Sports. So, it was a whole generation. It was a, a Barca or a Real fan, Messi or Ronaldo. Let's not have that argument. But also, we had a second team, a Raya Vallecano or a Real Betis or somewhere they wanted to go and see a game of football. Jude Bellingham, I met him recently uh, after the game. Is another of those kids. He mentioned he in, his, in his press conference, didn't yeah, he? That he was it brought did. up watching it. Yeah. Do you know what he did? He actually said to Sid, "Oh, I remember you, <laughs> and uh, you are you are the revista." It's like, no, you know the game. <laughs> but what he meant was that he was involved in everything yeah. that had to do with Spanish football she is a key element of yeah. all that no doubt uh, but yeah he, he was like it's interesting because uh, you could see how his tone changed when he saw me because he was like oh you, you and then he becomes this 10 year old that's watching Spanish or 12 year old that's watching Spanish football because he for a uh, one two generations yeah. really since 97 to 2003 nobody watched it then David Beckham comes in people start watching it and then after that of course the, the 2008 to 2012 era mm -hmm. um, it became British favorite uh, league really yeah I mean, at some point Sky do you think Sky were a little bit afraid of the competition or oh, I've, got, I've got my own theory on that which I probably won't say but I think at one point it maybe became that it had to be Premier League is everything on Sky and La Liga um, was doing brilliantly, and I think we were the we were the show that cost the least number of pounds and pence per viewer of anything that Sky put out there. So I, I think there was a point where Sky had to decide which way they went, and they obviously threw all of the uh, all of the pennies and the pounds and the euros in, into into the Premier League, and, and sadly we, we lost the La Liga. Yeah, and I can say that because I'm not on Sky. You don't need to agree with it. You don't need to mention anything. You don't need to comment on what I'm well, trying to say. You just drink a coffee. Yeah. But uh, at the beginning, um, when I started suggesting to go to Spain and, and do interviews, um, the response was very abrupt. Nobody cares. So why would you do that? And I was trying to say that you, got, you had three dimensions to the story. Um, eventually, we got a little bit of budget, and because we were like the show that perhaps in Sky nobody cared about, we were allowed to do stuff, stuff that was a bit different, taking people for meals and, and record the meals or um, or just get David Beckham. You gave us a tour of David Beckham's hotel and he's, the suite he was going to be staying in before he moved in there. I'll never forget that. It was like revolutionary and this is where he's going to be and this is where he'll come, this is where he'll live. Until, Which you until the produced. Time. I did, yeah. I did have you Which leaping. You out. I did have you. That was a very Rob Palmer did, kind of. Did piece. have you leaping out of somewhere like a Spanish? Club. I'm very sorry about that, yeah. Florentino was the man with a grand idea. Uh, what kind of relationship you you had with him and, and you have now with him? I've I've always had a great relationship with him. I, I love him as a as a president. And I loved him as a as a man as well. He was always really fair to me. He always said what he actually wanted and what he he felt. Um, and he always told me the truth and for me that was that was so important for me to he was the one that you know made my decision to to come to this club no 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 <laughs> but, but that was the thing to do the thing that that should have been done at that point and uh, and you have always had a very sharp mind about what's 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 good what's required the timing of things what is important you've always i've always admired that of you that you know you know the thing to do at that point and that was the thing to do no doubt about it but then i uh, there was another battle um that and we, we tended to win these battles where um you just I, did it anyway didn't you you do it yeah got it got david beckham his first interview as a real madrid player uh we were in a restaurant and we got some ham and some wine we drank the wine got a bit pissed victoria joined us later and all this and and it was a magnificent two-hour stay with him and obviously i, I I rang the producer, super excited, Dave Lawrence at the time. Uh, uh, Stevie Rowe was the assistant producer and had traveled to Madrid with us. And uh, and he was like, Dave, Dave, we've got to do a whole show on this. So no, 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 maybe we'll do four minutes of it. <laughs> what do you mean four minutes? And on that conversation on the film, the first one, he was like, 
may do a part. What do you mean a part? We have to do the whole show on it. And between Stevie and I convinced Dave to do a special David Beckham that, uh, that yeah, was the uh, door to the events. Doing Netflix, the whole Netflix documentary, oh, exactly. wouldn't they? Yeah, you see you're out of your side. Yeah, we used to travel three days to Spain. We were talking about it earlier. Three days to travel on a Tuesday, come back on a Thursday for two minutes of television. Yeah. It would be an interview with whoever. That's how you st I started getting relationships and, and do the same. You you went to see John Toshak. Mike, Mike Manaman. Well, when we, we the story I always tell is when we got the La Liga contract out of the blue. Um, well, it's described to me as a bunch of Spanish waiters kicking a beach ball around. You know, it was Figo and Zidane and the original Ronaldo. And uh, Bobby Robson was the manager back then of, of Barcelona. So I called football club Barcelona and. My Spanish wasn't great, but at least there was a chance I could speak to the manager's office to set up an interview with Bobby Robson. So I rang the manager's office, and Bobby Robson answers their phone. Who's that? It's Rob Palmer from Sky. Hello, son, how are you doing? Yeah, we've just got the La Liga call. Oh, good, I need to get some publicity back on. Do you want to come over? Whoa, and this was on the Thursday, and he took me over on the Monday, uh, met me at the airport, drove me to the Camp Nou. We spent a day in the life of a Barcelona manager up to like midnight I think it was like a 10 o'clock kickoff the big Extremadura 3-1 they were top of the league he got slaughtered by the Spanish press he's playing to our camera then we went back to his home in Sitges and that was my introduction to Spanish football being picked up by the Barcelona <laughs> football club manager so we had a, a unique access which changed completely when Beckham came in but we, it, it was brilliant and it was nice to bring the game and a different culture to the screens of, of the UK and everybody bought into it. I remember David Bobbin, rest in peace, that uh, that he told Dave Lawrence, the producer at the time, do not expect me to be interested in this thing when he got the <laughs> job. And then what I knew I had to do in every show is to entertain him. Yep. And, it, and it, I spent the first half an hour before we went on air telling him stories. He started telling me stories back because he would travel to Spain and then he was interested and then David Beckham came and then they got Rob Watson to present. Uh, we got Kate Abdo to present, Mark, Mark Bolton, Bolton to yep. present, and uh, and finally uh, Scott Minton. The last two years, I did it me a camera and a, and a producer uh, in the red bottom of the sky. When, <laughs> when by then nobody cared much about Spanish football. But I've always learned that the greatest thing about television or anything you do is actually to finish a little bit too early when you want more. This is it. That's coffee with the M today. That was about 20 minutes. <laughs> I know, it was as, as, as you press the red button.